Hello, the Commodore Tycholes with another Star Trek Picard review. This one will be Season 1, Episode 4, Absolute Candor. And, man, I got really mixed feelings with this episode because aspects of it are immaculately done and other parts are a heaping pile of anti-Trekkers avatar. This one episode was directed by Jonathan Frakes. And we start off with another 14-year flashback to when this colony of Romulans was first established. And you see Picard there beaming down and welcoming the Romulans and saying that Starfleet and the Federation are there to help and we will make sure everything is right. He goes to see his friend at the monastery. This is where it's just really badly done, but it could have been really good because it shows Picard so bubbly. The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. <laughs> Enjoy. Which is not quite him, but I can see how he could have been it. But, but Picard has been known for showing those types of emotions like in the one next generation episode when he finds he's in love with that one commander stopped and he's really big friends with the kid and I love it how the Romulans are saying well he's not a kid guy which is true but in this one, he shows, he it looks like he is. He dislikes displays of emotion. He's not overly fond of children. Not at all. Someday, I may get used to the way of absolute candor. Which, again, I think they should have shown him caring, but still be a bit standoffish. And that would have worked a lot better than how they portrayed it on screen. So we see some moments of him fencing and reading the Free Musketeers to the one kid. D'Artagnan then cast an anxious and rapid glance over the field of battle. I'm busy, Raffi. This is when the Sims attacked Mars. And he goes into instant Picard mode. The Picard that we all know and beams away to... And we all know what happens after. Picard, ready for transport. Then we go to present day. They're on the uh, ship. You got Captain Rizzo and the doctor talking with each other. And she is bored as all bored can be. So she's trying to figure out what she can do. She even was trying to watch a hollow novel. But he only has Klingon opera. Shout out to Commander Worf. I caught up on two years of back issues of the Journal of Theoretical Cybernetics. Including the fesh rip for Professor Kwok. I watered your plants. You're welcome. I was going to watch a hollow, but weirdly, all you have on board is Klingon opera. Long story. So they're changing course, and they're heading to that Romulan colony that we saw in the prologue that Picard helped set up. Raffi was pissed off that he's even going there. He's like, why are you going there? Picard. What's up? Vashti, Kirisha. Oh, Vashti. Man can't even take a guilt trip without using a starship. While this is happening... We have Picard recreating his uh, study at the chateau. Is it inaccurate? Everything seems absolutely correct in every particular. Which I find weird because in the previous uh, episode, he felt like he didn't want to be at home, but yet he's creating his home. I tried my best long to this place but I don't think I ever truly felt at home I felt this would have been a great opportunity to maybe recreate his ready room on the Enterprise D where he felt most comfortable so they're heading towards the uh, Romulan colony because they have this religion there where they have monks that will help you 
and fight for you. Pretty much an assassin, but with moral grounds or something. JL wants to hire an assassin. They are not assassins and you can't hire them. The Kowat Malat have to choose you. Romulan warrior nuns. They're heading there and they hear words of uh, piracy with an old style Romulan bird of prey. But he's probably stolen it by now. Here is sector sketchy nowadays. Serious power vacuum. Smugglers and petty warlords like Kar Kantar basically run the show. Kantar got hold of an antique bird of prey somewhere and has been running wild. Great to see that, but unfortunately it was ruined in the trailers. So we're at the artifact and we see Soji watching footage of the woman she was interviewing in the previous episode and explaining about the destroyer. <laughs> So the car go to the planet. It looks like a slum and like with segregation of Romulans only and humans and all that. And this is where it irks me a bit. The true on true. They are mainly saying it as hell and hello. Not even a like a special greeting. It's just simply hello. Which does not make sense if you took the episodes where it was originally said. Mainly unification part one and part two. Mainly part two. Eat your soup. Courtesy of a loyal establishment. Joanne True. Jolan true, Spock. And they say true on true when they're leaving or at the end of a statement. And they just don't seem like they're saying hello. They could have done something so much more with it. Like say some sort of greeting like the Vulcans live long and prosper or the Klingons with long live the empire or something. Like peace be with you or glory and honor follow you or something. Have True on True do something like that. But no, they went the easiest, cheapest route and had it say hello. So Picard goes back to the monastery and he finds the little boy that he w we saw at the beginning has grown up and become a warrior. I would never see you again. I don't have the right. But I need your help one last time. The hair. So while Picard's dealing with his Romulan problem, we find out that the crazy woman uh, survived her killing herself. Poor Ramda. She's always been a bit of a tormented soul. Soji and her boy toy are playing around in the cube. You kind of challenge my paradigm. Another chance. How did you know I was going to the disordered ward just now? I didn't. I'm not really caring about as many of the scenes in the cube because it just seems like it's taking away from what's happening with Picard. I know he's there to save her, but quasi love story that they keep cutting to, it feels like they're more of a focus than Picard. And last time I checked, this was called Star Trek Card. Not Star Trek Love in Space. But I do love how they do with the Borg. But again, they bring up some craziness about the Borg saying a Borg ritual that they slide on the floor. Relation return. Take off your shoes. What? Why? A Borg ritual. Shoes off. I don't see Borg doing that. Hell no. He's kind of bitter with Picard because he felt like Picard left him. Will you bind your sword to my quest? Now that you have use for me, now that I have value to you, you left me on my own, old man. I never meant to. I see no reason not to do the same. So he goes to that Romulan-only restaurant and 
tears down the sign, and sits down. They ignore him. Flashbacks to 1950s America with the blacks and the whites. And I like how they did it with this. It shows you segregation. That was a very powerful part in the whole episode. Then, one of the Romulans, he was a former Romulan senator, confronts Picard. And he brings up some interesting names. The name of the freighter that carried them to safety. And the specific freighter ship name. Those great big Wallenberg class transports. We all packed and boarded the Nightingale. Five generations of parents and grandparents, siblings and spouses and children. So you have the freighter uh, class named Wallenberg, R Rural Wallenberg, who saved thousands of Hungarian Jews during the Holocaust. And then the ship that he was on specifically was called the Nightingale, named after Florence Nightingale, a nurse that is pretty much found modern nursing. And they were both linked to humanity's caring. These two were talking about mercy and medical, and it's interesting to see the information about what these were named after. So the Romulan Center keeps going on and on, saying, you betrayed us, and you took advantage of us. You came to us when we were weak. You came to us at a moment of when we were down, and you didn't know how resilient the Romulans were, which... No one asked for your pity, Picard. Just as no one asked for your help. You and Starfleet had no understanding of Romulan ingenuity, resolve, self-sufficiency. You took advantage of us at the very moment where we doubted ourselves. In other episodes that feature Romulans in the other series, you do see that the Romulans are very resourceful and they are clever. So, this whole scene ends up in a fight where the other guy challenges Picard to a sword fight. Picard, hesitant, but then picks up the sword and then throws it away. Just... <laughs> Elnor shows up and defends the Picard because he has chosen Picard. Yes, your cause is noble. I'll bind my blade to your cause. And he goes after the Romulan senator. He gives him a chance to run away. He doesn't. And he decapitates him. This, this, this. I like the honor of the, the warrior, but did he we really need a decapitation? Because even when we saw rock Klingons in action, yes, we saw stabbings in previous in, uh, Star Trek episodes with the Klingons, but we never seen someone decapitated. I think that was a little too far. I see it fitting into the story somewhat. Like, I could have saw, like, he could have just wounded him, not killed him would have made just as easy of a statement. So just before the other wrong is pulled to disruptors, Picard beams up. He gives him a little bit of a tongue lashing, saying if you're going to bind your blood by my cause, you're going to use your sword when I say use your sword. He chose it. Fight a co-op Malatin, the outcome is not in doubt. Now you listen to me carefully. I will benefit by your skill and your courage, but if you bind yourself to my cause, I will tell you when to fight and when to refrain. And they talk, and he, Elon said that, yes, your cause is worthy. It meets the criteria. And then the doctor asks, what criteria? And Picard mentions it's a winless cause. Require mental worthiness. A gallant guy will only bind herself, himself, to a lost cause. We get a scene with brother and sister. Oh, do you think she's a real friend? 
I take it she's anatomically correct? Can I say? Lieutenant Rizzo looks pretty damn hot in this scene. I might have to redo my top 10 hottest women of Star Trek. And then we see the Romulan bird of prey. Weapons online. But it was great to see it. And unlike what they did with the Enterprise, the original Enterprise and Discovery, they did not alter this. It looks almost identical to how it looked in Balance of Terror. Maybe no bird on the bottom, but it looks like the bird of prey. But I wish they kept that Romulan bird of prey around a, a little longer. Because shortly after, they have a firefight, which is decently done. And we see another ship come in range and takes off one of the cells. <laughs> Phasers are, and disruptors are flying everywhere. And the other ship is not functioning. So they beam the pilot aboard and it ends up being... Seven of nine end of episode with seven saying you owe me a ship Picard. Seven of nine. You owe me a ship Picard. Overall, hit and miss episode. There's some brilliant spots like the desegregation of the Romulan colony. And it shows you what really was at stake and how pitiful Starfleet was to turn their back on them by giving them all this hope, even naming their ships and class of ship after people that are well known for humanitarian reasons. The Kellen Kankai and the Brahmin Bird of Prey. Those were great aspects of this episode, but then they just drag it down with other stuff like the needless death killing of that Romulan former Romulan setter, the destruction of that bird of prey, the shifting characteristics of Picard. Because before you see what, yes, I can see this is Jean Luc Picard, but then other aspects, it's like it's just an old man. Like, I understand character development, you can't rehash the same character traits, then the character becomes boring. <coughs> Michael Burnham. I think this is the, a decent episode and has tons of potential, but they just lost it at certain areas. And uh, the episodes I've seen so far, I think this is the most Trek out of them all. And it focused on Picard, unlike the other episodes that focused on everyone else. So that's my opinion of this episode. Good, but it could have been great. So for your Commodore Ty Coles, live long and prosper. Hailing frequencies closed. Thank you for watching Commodore Ty and enjoying this video. I hope you uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If while you're here, check out one of my other videos. And if you're feeling generous, why not a donation to my PayPal? Live long and prosper. Hailing frequencies closed.